Today, we're gonna to be making our own titanium ultralight tent stakes. And there's a reason why we're making our own. Let me start from the beginning, as I always do. These tent stakes here are made by Titanium Goat. They are very good. They're very thick in diameter, they're very long and they're very light. They're made of carbon fiber. But I have, over the years, broken several of them. They often fail at the head, or sometimes they snap all together. And what we're gonna do is recreate new ones using a titanium shaft. And I'm gonna show you how. First question you're gonna ask is, Steve, how come you're not showing us how to make the Atani tent stakes that Suluk 46 sells? And the answer is because I think in order to make those, the equipment required would be a little bit out of the general individual's reach. You'd need a water jet or a laser cutter, or even, you know, a pretty tough metal bandsaw that you could cut some stuff. So I feel like this is a little bit easier to do, and it uses equipment that, you know, me and you kind of have in our house. The first thing I'm gonna do is show you what you're gonna need to build these things. And the second thing I'm gonna do is show you how I designed them. So first, very small pipe cutter. Second, quarter inch titanium tubes. Okay, they're hollow. These ones here have a 16 thou wall thickness. They are very light, but yet very strong. These are 3D printed components. One is the cap. The other is what I call the spike. We are going to bond these after cutting them using epoxy. Now that I use a two part epoxy, my recommendation to you is go to the hardware store and buy JB Weld. I'm not even gonna show you what this is because this is an industrial version that I don't want you to use. And we're gonna mix it on this very, very nasty platform that I mix a lot of epoxy on. What I did was uh, recreate my own here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this shaft out of a piece of titanium tubing with extremely thin wall. And I'm gonna 3D print the spike, let's call it, and the cap. And I'll do a cross section here to show you sort of how this is gonna look. So the cap <clears throat> is designed in a way that it'll have a little bit more um, material on the way on the outside, let's call it. And that I'm hoping will stop this part from kind of twisting and breaking like we've seen on some of the other ones. So it goes in about a quarter of an inch and outside it's about an eighth of an inch. On the actual spike portion, I've designed it like so. Now I'm gonna have a little bit of a rounded radius right there. I anticipate that this won't be perfectly straight right there because I'm going to be using a pipe cutter so I'm hoping that this kind of fits a little bit better and this will just be slid in and epoxied same as the top. I've made it exactly six inches so it might be a little bit longer six and a quarter inches but I'm going to make two different versions a nine inch and a six inch so let's get moving. First thing we do is import the files into the program. And you're going to see that we're going to have the ability actually to move them around a bit. We're going to have uh, eight caps and eight spikes. Does that make sense? Oh, no, actually, I lied. We're going to have six. Now nah, you know what? Let's make it eight. I'm good with that. So you set something up like that. It's pretty simple. We're going to go with 100% fill. It's going to give me a warning. Yes, that's fine. We're going to go with 0.2 quality. Yes, slice now. And as you can see here at the bottom, it looks like that that is going to take us roughly 48 minutes, which is quite long actually, but it is what it is. So we export the G-code and we'll get the printer going. So 
So these actually turned out pretty nice. They're a little bit hairy. So let's put them in. So there's the top portion that goes on the end. And this is, I guess, what would be considered a little spike. This is solid PET G. So it's not, um, you know, when you think of plastic, it's stronger than you think. So let's build the rest of them and see how they hold up. You may not have known this, but in my mind, I thought I told you we're going to be making um, six tent stakes today. Four of them are going to be six inches long and two of them are going to be nine inches long. And the reason why is usually if I'm in the appropriate conditions with loose soil and I'm not using the Atani tent stakes, which is ideal for hard soils, um, I put six inch tent stakes on each corner and then two to guy out the doors and the vent. So let's get started with that. And you end up with our first nine foot section. Close enough in length. Um, the ends are probably a little bit rough from the pipe cutter. So if you've got some sandpaper, um, you can go ahead and clean those up. I'm gonna use a belt sander, and then I'm just gonna quickly put these on the wire wheel to polish them up a little bit. turned out pretty nice actually all right and now you want to test fit your caps just to make sure they go in that one does so I know the diameter is correct and this one here yeah that also will go in no problem make sure I can get it out so if that is in fact the case we're gonna mix the epoxy and build these things. Two part epoxy is mixed together. You do not need much. This is actually probably way too much for all of these stakes. You just need a little dab to keep them from popping off. So remember, you're gonna use JB Weld or something similar from your local hardware store. We take our little tube, take, the littlest bit of epoxy and just put it in there. Next. There you go. This will take 24 hours to dry. You do the other side. It is the same. It's actually kind of hard because it's so small. Take the small thing here. Put it in. That's your first tent stake. We are going to let it dry. And there is our completed set of tent stakes. We will let them dry for, you know, four to six hours. Then we'll weigh them and we'll punch them into the ground. Oh, these do look good. Okay. Let's weigh them. For the six inch stake. So it looks like about 
six to seven grams, six grams. And for the nine inch steak, uh, oh, it's a little bit flippity. Nine to 10, right on the brink. Let's weigh the other one, see if it gets a little bit better. Yeah, it looks like nine. Thank you.